What's going on, Strand Team family? Look, I'm right back with another great video. If you're new to the Strand Team family, welcome to the Strand Team family. All we do over here is get gains. If you have any video suggestions or any video requests, all you gotta do is put them at the bottom and I promise you we're gonna make that video happen. If you clicked on this video, you are interested or you are serious about trying to lose some weight. The guarantee that I will make to you if you're watching this video, if you would dedicate at least two months, just two months of your life and be strict, what I'm about to show you, I can guarantee that you would drop minimum 20 to 30 pounds. Now it's not gonna be easy. A lot of people do these diet videos, they do not tell you what is all involved. Like when you're doing this and you ain't depending on like no magic pill or uh, gear or any of that crap, listen, it is hard work. I'm talking about you're gonna make some serious sacrifices. Now I'm not here to talk to you all day, so we're gonna jump straight into this. I'm gonna break everything down. And we're gonna start with meal number one. The macros are gonna be 42 grams of protein, 28 grams of carbs, nine grams of fat, and it's gonna equal out to being 368 total calories. I know a lot of people are new to this whole meal prepping and everything, so I'm not only gonna tell you what to eat, I'm gonna show you how to cook it. So it's what you're gonna do for meal number one. You're gonna take one whole egg, you're gonna whisk the egg, and you're gonna add one to two tablespoons of water, and you're gonna mix it for a few seconds. Now you're gonna add in 53 grams of Kodiak pancake mix, now you're gonna mix it all together until there's a smooth consistency. You're gonna preheat the skillet on the oven eye for low heat and let it warm up for at least like one to two to even three minutes. Now you're gonna spray the skillet with non-stick spray and go ahead and take a paper towel and just wipe off the excess spray with the paper towel. Now pour your pancake mixture into the center of the skillet. Now you're gonna cook it for two to three minutes. Now take a spatula and flip it over on the other side and then you're gonna cook it again for another one to two minutes. Do not overcook your pancakes. I've done that before and it's just gonna taste like a brick. You're not gonna eat it, so trust me, do not overcook it. Now your pancake is done, so go ahead and remove it from the skillet. Now simply just kind of rinse the skillet with water and then you're gonna put it right back on the same oven eye. It's just already be hot. But now you're gonna turn the heat up to medium high. And again, go ahead and spray it with your nonstick spray. Again, take your paper towel and you're gonna wipe off the excess spray. Now you're gonna weigh out 200 grams of liquid egg whites. Go ahead and pour the 200 grams of liquid egg whites into the skillet. Now you're gonna cook it for one to two minutes and then you're gonna fold the sides like I'm showing you in the video. And then you're gonna flip it over and cook for another one to two minutes. I kind of make it like an omelet. Now you can simply just take your spatula and just start scrambling it and just scramble it like some regular eggs. Now you're gonna remove the egg whites, turn off the oven eye and enjoy. Now supplementation wise, I take a probiotic pretty much soon as I wake up in the morning, which is usually like 30 to 45 minutes before I eat, and I just go ahead and get that into my system. But with this meal number one, I always take these supplements, and again, I'm never gonna be the one to push supplements over you because honestly, they're supplements. That's, that's, that's the word of them. Think about it, they are supplements. They are not food, they're not, they're not the king. So it's just supplementation, and this is just my preference. But I take, uh, like I say, the probiotic 30 to 45 minutes before, and then I take the fish oil, I take joint support, I take vitamin D3, and I take a multivitamin. I don't even get like an expensive brand. Multivitamins to me is pretty much all the same except the price ranges. Now your macros for meal number two, it's gonna be 68 grams of protein, 24 grams of carbs, and eight grams of fat, and it's gonna equal out to 460 total calories. Again, I'm gonna show you how to cook meal number two. Now we're gonna have eight ounces of grilled chicken breast. So what you're gonna do is how you're gonna prepare it, you're gonna trim the excess fat from your chicken breast. Now go ahead and lightly coat it with just some non-stick spray. You don't have to do this, I do this, simply because it doesn't stick on the grill. But you can cook it in the oven, you can boil it, you can cook it a million different ways, but I'm just showing you how I do it. Now you're just gonna take your favorite seasonings and you're gonna season all of your chicken. Now I use season salt, I use chicken seasoning, and I use lemon pepper. Sometimes I even add ground black pepper, it just depends on the mood that I'm in. Now, after you do that, go ahead and flip the chicken over, and again, you're gonna repeat the exact same process. So you're gonna spray it again, make sure you got your chicken pretty much coated with your non-stick spray, and then you're gonna season it with your favorite seasonings. Now, go ahead and preheat your grill to 400 degrees. Now start putting your chicken breast on the preheated grill, and once you get all your chicken on the grill, go ahead and close the lid and turn the heat down a little bit. Now I want you to cook that chicken for four to six minutes at 375 degrees. Now flip the chicken over on the other side, and now you're gonna cook it again for four to six minutes or 
until the internal temperature reaches 165 degrees. Now me personally, I normally take it off when it's around 160 degrees and then I just put it in the container with the lid on it and then it just finishes cooking out because I'm telling you right now, you do not want to eat some dry, tough chicken. We had this meal two times a day, so we're gonna repeat it. You do not want your chicken to be dry and tough because if you're eating dry and tough chicken two times a day, day in, day out, you're gonna cheat. You're gonna cheat. You're gonna get tired of that chicken. You're gonna go get you a burger. You're gonna get you a pizza. You're gonna get you a ham. You wanna eat something other than this chicken because I'm telling you. So that's why I'm, I'm big on making your food taste good. Not only look good, make your food taste good so you enjoy it. I enjoy eating my food and most of the times I forget that I'm even dieting. <laughs> so once your chicken reaches the 165 degrees internal temperatures, go ahead and start taking the chicken off the grill, cut your grill off and then go ahead and put your chicken in a container and put the lid on it and just put it to the side for later. Also with meal number two, you're gonna have 50 grams of green vegetables. I normally do spinach or Brussels sprouts, but you can use whichever one you like. I know the most common one is broccoli, but me personally, I'm just burnt out on broccoli. So I'm gonna show you how I prepare my Brussels sprouts. Go ahead and pour them in a pot and fill it up about two thirds of the way full. Now cover the Brussels sprouts with water, but don't overfill the pot or it's going to boil over onto your stove. Now put the pot on the oven eye and turn the heat on high. Now you're going to bring the water and the Brussels sprouts to a boil. Now you're going to do this for three to five minutes. And after that, just go ahead and remove them from the pot. Turn your oven eye back off. Now you're just going to drain the water off the Brussels sprouts and put them in a container with the lid. And that's pretty much it with the Brussels sprouts. Also, I normally do spinach. I get the organic spinach that's in a microwavable bag. So it's so simple. I literally take the bag, put it in the microwave. I cook it for six to eight minutes, take it out let it sit for one or two minutes to cool off and it's as simple as that it's a little bit more expensive but it's just more convenient and it's a really dark green color and they just got a really good flavor so i just like i say i just like stuff that tastes good and and works for me so that's the way that i do my spinach but you're more than welcome to steam it uh, boil it or however you want to if you choose to go with the spinach and also you have two of your favorite rice cakes my two favorite are caramel and cinnamon apple but again you can choose any two flavors that you want because they're pretty much identical with their macros okay now it's meal number three and this is normally my pre-workout meal but if you work like graveyard shift this probably won't be your pre-workout meal i work first shift so it usually works out where i eat this about four o'clock in the day and that's like an hour right before i work out but again it does not have to be your pre-workout meal meal number three is going to be 68 grams of protein 34 grams of carbs and eight grams of fat and it's going to equal out to 530 calories now we have eight ounces of grilled chicken breast that you've already got cooked and prepared so there's no need for me to tell you how to cook it again and we have 100 grams of cooked jasmine rice and i'm going to show you how to cook it you're going to get you a measuring cup now you're going to measure out two cups of jasmine rice now take the rice and pour it into a strainer now you're going to rinse the rice for one to two minutes under room temperature water Go ahead and shake off the excess water and pour the clean rice into a bowl or a container. Now, go ahead and measure out three total cups of water and pour it into a pot. Put the pot on the stove, cut the heat on high, and bring it to a boil. Now, once the water starts boiling, go ahead and put your two cups of rice into the water. Once that starts boiling, go ahead and turn the temperature down. Bring it on like low, or maybe your stove says simmer. Bring it on one of your lower settings. Now, you're going to cover it and you're going to cook it for 20 minutes. Now, what I do is a little trick. When it cooks halfway, like when it's like at the 10 minute mark, I normally take a spoon and I just go ahead and stir the bottom. That way it doesn't stick. Now, after you cook it for 20 minutes, go ahead and turn the heat off, take the pot off the oven, and that is pretty much it with your rice. Now, again, you have 50 grams of Brussels sprouts or you have 50 grams of spinach or your favorite vegetable. Okay, now we're on meal number four and your macros are gonna be 61 grams of protein, 20 grams of carbs, and eight grams of fat you're gonna have 394 total calories. And this is normally my post-workout. It's the shake that I drink after my workout, but again, it does not have to be your post-workout shake. You're gonna pour 16 ounces of unsweetened almond milk into your blender. Now go ahead and pour 12 grams of your collagen powder in the blender. Now pour 60 grams or two servings of your favorite isolate protein powder in the blender. 
Now take 100 grams of frozen blueberries and put them in the blender. Now just put the lid on the blender and just blend it all up for five to 10 seconds and this is amazing. Now this ain't as great as some of my shakes that I be making like when I'm not on a diet, like when I'm bulking or just maybe maintaining. They're a whole lot better because then I start adding in like strawberries, bananas, peanut butter, honey, all that good stuff. But listen, this shake right here is still really well. And this is the shake that I drink, like I say, right after my workout, I make this fresh just like I make meal number one fresh. I never prep my breakfast just because it only takes like 10 minutes to make. Okay, now we're on meal number five and I would have to say that this is probably my favorite meal of the day. Your macros are gonna be 38 grams of protein, 34 grams of carbs, and 17 grams of fat, and it's gonna equal out to 572 calories. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to cook this and prepare it and everything. So we have six ounces of 90-10 ground sirloin. A lot of people do 93-7, but I think 90-10 tastes better and there's really not a whole lot of fat difference. So I, like I tell you, I always go with what tastes better. So this is how we're gonna cook these beef patties up. We're gonna take ground beef and we're gonna weigh it all out into eight ounces. I do this so they all cook the same. They normally cook down to the six ounces that I actually need. So go ahead and massage and roll and smash each eight ounce burger into two inch patties. Now we're going to season them. You can use your favorite seasoning. Remember, cook them so they're good and you really like them. Now, after you got all your patties seasoned really well, go ahead and smash the seasoning into the patties. Now just flip them over and you're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Now, go ahead and preheat your grill to 400 degrees. Once your grill is hot and ready, put the cooking mat. You don't have to use a cooking mat, but I like the cooking mat simply because there's no flare-ups. That's the only downfall about gas grills. If you get a flare-up, listen, I've got some stories I could tell you that I've almost blew my whole house up because I just forgot about some stuff cooking and the grease was popping and popping, but that's a whole nother video, but just trust me. And then carefully put your hamburger patties on the mat. Now you're just gonna close the lid. Go ahead and turn your heat down on the grill just a little bit. Now I want you to cook them at 350 degrees for five to six minutes. Now, after your five to six minutes are up, now just flip your patties on the other side and you're gonna cook them again for another four to six minutes or until the internal temperature reaches 145 to 160 degrees, depending on how you like your burgers. Now that your burgers are done, go ahead and get you a spatula and start taking them off the grill. I normally like get me a cooking board, then I'll put me like a paper towel down and then I'll put my hamburger patties right there. That way it just drains off a little bit of the excess juice. I think this is where most people get confused is the actual meal prepping part of meal prepping. So I'm gonna break it down for you. So if you was doing meal number two, it would look like this. You're gonna put your container on your kitchen scale and then turn on the scale. Make sure it's weighing in ounces. Take your cooked chicken, now you're gonna weigh out eight ounces. Now go ahead and hit the tear button. It's gonna have a tear button and what that's gonna do is it's gonna zero it out. So it should be reading zero again. Now change it from ounces to grams and now you're gonna weigh out your 50 grams of your Brussels sprouts or your 50 grams of your spinach. Now when you're doing like stuff like Brussels sprouts, it may be like 54, 55 grams, 56 grams. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to get a scissor out and like cut it and try to make it perfectly 50 grams. A little bit is okay. And it's gonna be the exact same thing just like this if you were doing like meal number three. Go ahead and weigh out eight ounces of cooked chicken. Go ahead and press tear. Change the grams. Now weigh out 100 grams of rice. Then you're gonna press tear again. Weigh out 50 grams of vegetables. I normally prep for four days so my food stays fresh and good. I used to do like five to six, to even seven days, but I started questioning if the food was still good. So I got away from those extreme long preps, even though it does make your life easier, but at the same time, you wanna be safe. I don't want you to get food poisoning or anything like that. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, meal number one, which is your breakfast, I always cook that right before work. And meal number four, which is that uh, protein shake, I always cook that fresh every single day and I cook that right after I work out. So meal number two, three, and five are the meals that I really only prep and that's just my preference. You can, hey, if you wanna prep breakfast, hey, you can prep breakfast. You, if you wanna prep your uh, protein shakes and you got enough containers, hey, that's perfectly fine too. But this is just how I personally do it and it has been working out phenomenally. Now for the entire breakdown of all the meals, what you're gonna be eating every single day, it's gonna be 277 grams of protein, 140 grams of carbs, 50 grams of fats, and you're gonna have 2,324 total calories. That is give and take because again, you're gonna have little seasonings here and there, but I don't even count that. 
Now, this is gonna work great for anybody that's in the range of maybe 195 to all the way to 250. The only difference is if you weigh more, of course, you're gonna to have to add a little bit more food or you're gonna you're gonna be hungry and your weight's gonna drop fast. And then if you're under that, so let's say you weigh like maybe 180 or 170 or even 160, of course, you're gonna to have to take some of the food away simply because you're going to end up gaining weight and I know you're not wanting to do that. So you have to adjust it just a little bit. Like I say, this is just for that range of maybe 200 to 250 pounds. It's going to work out perfectly. You really won't have to change anything. And when it comes to water, nobody talks about water. The way that you should approach your water intake every single day, no matter what you are doing, no matter what profession you are in, half of your body in ounces. So an example, if you weigh 200 pounds, you need at least 100 ounces of water every single day. I'm weighing like 185 right now. I just go back and forth between 182 and 185. And I get at least 1.5 to 2 gallons of water every single day. And I have no water weight on me. I mean, I have a little bit, but it's not like that. A lot of people don't like to drink water because they think it's going to make them retain water. And that is so far from the truth. That is not going to happen. Honestly, the more water you drink, your body's like, oh, I'm getting water. So you just flush out more water. And you will notice you'll start peeing more. Your pee is going to be more clear. Your pee is going to smell like nothing. Like, you know, if you don't drink no water, your pee is going to stink. It's going to be strong. It's going to be dark. You don't want that. A lot of people think a gallon of water is a lot, but it really isn't. If you were to drink just four 32 ounces of Gatorade, and I mean, that's easy to do. Think how easy that is to do. Or four McDonald's uh, sweet teas and take the ice away. That's easy to do. That's a gallon right there. It's, it's just, it's a gallon. It's easy to do. And once you start drinking water, you'll crave it and you'll drink more and more and it'll just become natural. And you won't even realize that you, oh wow, I've done drink a gallon of water that fast. It's easy. Now we're at the end. So now it's time for the cardio. And this is going to be the struggle bus for most people because it is a lot of fasted cardio. And like I'm trying to tell you at this point in my prep, I'm very deep into it. So my, my cardio is kind of high. You can take baby steps, guys and ladies, and work yourself up to it. Like when I first started out, I was only doing like 30 minutes of cardio three times a week. I did like uh, fasted on Monday, fasted on Wednesday, and post-workout on Friday. So you can start like that and then just slowly you start making increments where you're increasing it and increasing it after week after week after week. Just watch your weight. And what your weight does is what you want to make your adjustments with your cardio. But where I'm at currently and what this is set up on, Monday, you have post-workout cardio. So immediately after your workout, you're going to do 40 minutes on the treadmill. Every single day, it's the same thing. 3.2 miles per hour, 7.0 incline. Tuesday, you have fasted and post-workout cardio. Wednesday, you have post-workout cardio. Thursday, you have fasted and post-workout cardio. Friday, you have post-workout cardio. Saturday and Sunday morning, you have fasted cardio. If you like how you're training, listen, just keep training how you're training because I don't think there's no perfect split. I just think that there's perfect splits for individuals. What I personally like, I like push, pull, legs, rest. Push, pull, legs, rest. No matter what day it falls on, that's just how I feel. I just feel rested. I feel strong. I feel pumped. Everything always just feels great and it works for me. And on my pushes, one of my push days, I'll do mainly chest with a little bit of side delts and uh, whatever need work. And then my next push day, I'll focus more on my shoulders and just maybe a little bit of like my upper chest or whatever I feel needs work. I mean, this right here is just playing with your body, learning your body, learning yourself. But the main thing is seeing if you are really serious about them gains. Like this is going to take a lot of discipline, a lot of determination. Like you're going to have mood swings. You're going to have energy drops. You're going to have moments where you feel great. You're going to have moments when you feel sad. You're going to, it's just going to be like an emotional roller coaster. A lot of people don't tell you all this, but I just want y'all to be honest. So when you feel that feeling, you know that it is okay. There's days where I feel great and I have all the energy in the world. And then the very next day, I just feel like, what happened? I'm just like, I'm dead. So then you got to start taking a step back. Remember when you're, when you're doing cardio and when you're doing strict diets like this, you're not able to go in the gym and train like you used to. So don't try to go in the gym and be training for three hours because you don't have those extra calories in you to be worrying about burning. Trust me, do not do it. Know what you're training, go in there and stay between 15 to 20 sets and just absolutely blast it. Take a couple of your sets to failure, slow down those negatives. And I promise you, you're going to make some fan fantastic gains even if you only do half of this diet and half of the cardio i'm telling you how fail proof this is you're still going to make some great gains 
200 to 250 pounds, you don't have to adjust anything. You're gonna lose weight fast and you're probably gonna feel hungry because more than likely you're probably only eating one or two big meals a day. That's most big people's problem. They like to eat big meals and they only eat like one or two times a day. So they don't really burn nothing. Their metabolism is just pretty much at an all time low. So with this, you're starting to eat smaller meals and you're eating more frequently throughout the day. So it's going to build and just boost up your metabolism and you're just going to start burning fat. You're going to start dropping weight and everything. And again, for the smaller guys and ladies out there, all you'd have to do if you're under 200 pounds, listen, just take a little bit of weight. So I broke down the macros and everything so it gives you the perfect guide to go by. But like I tell you in every single video. And also, if you need help, I'll try my best to uh, help you as best as I can. I'm like real deep into my prep, so my, I don't really have a whole lot of time, but I'll try my best to get to you. Like if you send me an email or a direct message, I'll try my best to get to you as fast as possible, but I will eventually get to you because I leave nobody hanging. But like I tell you in every single video, my mouth was dry. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you share this video. But at the end of the day, make sure you keep getting them games.